Hi everybody, thanks for joining me today and uh, my name is Heidi and today we're going to practice or work on drawing mandalas which are a generally circular type of design that has a lot of repetition layers within it. It could be used as a focal point when practicing breathing exercises or looking for a meditation or just you know having something to gaze upon um, kind of give you that break just taking the moment of pause so normally when I'm drawing a mandala or in, you know when I want it to be more exact and precise I would be using things like a um, I should have some more ready for you like a t-square and what do I have in my little box that I'd like to use? I use a protractor, so you can see, perhaps you can see. It has these markings for different degrees for angles. Uh, I usually start off with my 90 and maybe then mark the 45s. Depends, you know, if I'm doing an 8 point, I'm going to divide it up that way. Uh, sometimes I've done one that's like a 6 or a 12, so you have to use different angles. But see, it's, it already gets getting complicated. We don't need that today. I uh, also would use things like these triangles. This one's, you know, the equilateral, or we have our isosceles. So you've got the 90 degrees. And, you know, this one has the 45. This one's, a, was this 30 and 60, perhaps? If I remember correctly compass. The compass is helpful for making circles. It has this sharp point and then a lead. And so you put it down on the page and you know, that point you can hold it and just spin it around make nice little circles and it's really easily adjustable for different sizes. Alright, but more than what we need for today. So today we're just going to use some things that, you know, found around the house. What you really want to have, that's really useful, is a clear lid from a to-go container. It has this little divot in the middle from the manufacturing, I suppose, when uh, liquid's being poured into the mold and right when it, you know, shuts off. Uh, it probably leaves a little drop that kind of makes that extra divot there, but it's in the center pretty much, and so that can be useful when we're trying to start off with centering our mandala design on the page. I also have this inner ring from an embroidery hoop, um, tape dispenser ring, a circular button, and cap from a beverage. Okay, so I'm going to angle the camera down onto the workspace so you can see what I'm drawing. Oh, but first I should show you. So here's an example of a mandala I drew the other day using this technique. And so it's kind of an eight point, but you can see within, you know, I have these major eight points, but I also have these points in between. So it's kind of a 16 point mandala. All right. And you don't have to color yours in color with pencil. You can do black and white. I can show you a couple samples of that eventually when we get there. Let's get, get some uh, light down on our subject here. Okay. So to begin, I prefer that my paper be in a square shape when I'm drawing. It just helps me visually see the design as it's forming. So doesn't have to happen that way, but I'm just going to start off. So I have a regular piece of this uh, printer paper on hand, and I'm going to take the short edge and fold it to meet the long edge to help me create that square. Crease it down. Trim this with scissors. Okay, set that aside. Now, to help me with having those angles that I talked about, having my 90 and the 45, which helps set up the different segments that you use for drawing the mandala, as you can see here, I'm just going to fold. So I've got one fold. Bring this corner to that corner. Bringing it up. 
smoothing it out. Now we have a nice 90 degree in the page. You can see that. So now we need to create our 45 degree angle. So to do that, I'm going to keep it folded out like this because I feel the less paper in the way, the better. It makes a little bit cleaner crease. Fold that edge up to meet that center point. Fold this edge to meet that other crease. Okay, and so now we have eight points to work with. But going further, I want to have 16, so I'm just going to fold this back up and fold this edge to that edge, and that'll get that line on the in-between. Okay. Just setting up the workspace this way. Now, if you'd like, you could take some kind of a straight edge, which, so supposing you don't have a ruler on hand, envelope is quite handy. I'm just going to sharpen up my pencil. All right. Just kind of eyeballing where the center is. It looks to be kind of right about there. Set my envelope down, holding my pencil here, kind of butting right up against it, lining up, just a nice light line. And I'm not going to do all 16 lines. I'm just going to do eight. And then down the center. All right, so you can see we have eight lines to work with, and then there's these creases that'll help you to see those areas in between. Okay, so the beginnings. First thing I like to start with is some kind of general boundary circle, I guess you could call it. So working with that little divot in the middle of the center of that clear lid, place it so it's over the center of the mandala. I'm hoping you can see that pretty well. Maybe I tilt it up. All right, so holding it in place, just draw a circle around it. Oops. Try to keep your fingers out of the way. <laughs> okay. So, let's go along and do... So this one I did a flower. And to make the flower petals, I was putting the lid... Kind of line it up this way. Putting the edge of the lid so it would hit in the center, and then the middle point was hitting a hitting uh, the edge of that circle. So I'm putting the center of the lid here and then the edge of it meets up with the center because it is just working with the radius, right, of the diameter in half. So you go like that. Makes a nice curved shape. And I'm not going to do it on all 16. I'm just going to go to each of the eight lines. I'm just trying to make an, a simple, somewhat open, I don't want it to be a real complicated mandala today. And as I walk you through this, I mean, we're not going to have time to finish the entire mandala, but just to kind of give you a sense of how you can use different shapes, how they'll affect your drawing, but really, you just have to play around. 
And that's why it's nice having a pencil. You know, you can always erase something if you don't like how it's appearing. You know, as the design's emerging, maybe there's an element you decide you don't like so much. So you just take it away. All right. So now we have these eight flower points. And this one I started, you know, as you draw in, you start to add more elements in. I'm just kind of getting the basic groundwork, and then can add in a little bit more. Well, let's see. I like to work with this now. It fits in there pretty, pretty well, pretty snug because it kind of hits below the tips of the petals. And so all I'm doing, you can see, is lining up the outer edge of this with this point and this point. So as I push it down in there and it kind of hits that area, not totally exact, right? But again, it's not what we're here for. Just got to take a little bit down. So it's kind of really not hitting the tips of the petals. It's more along this edge here. And I'm going to start to draw from the point from each tip to each tip, like that. Get that nice little inner curving action here. Okay, so you can see how that's affected that, making those points. Okay, and I could keep working with curves, but I think now I want to start to add in some straight lines. So, I'm going to find this point here, and lining it up again with the tip of the petal, and just draw a line that way. And so it's just connecting these different areas to each other through various shapes. So we go around. Okay, a lot of this, you know, it's just, you do focus, because you want to pay attention to how you're drawing these elements, how you're repeating them, and in that way, hopefully quieting other areas of the mind to not be so distracted. As you get into your flow with adding in an element, you got to check in with how you're breathing, maybe how you're sitting, where you start to notice the tension that you hold. And try not to get tense in your drawing. You know, sometimes you're working on it, you're like, oh, I'm just not sure. Just, you know, breathe, let it go. I mean, I've gone through quite a few mandalas that I end up not feeling like I like it. And so you just step away. Sometimes come back to it. So, for example, let's see what happens here. If I do that. Am I going to like it? That seems a little bit not quite what I was looking for. So, I'm going to erase it. Not that eraser. Not an eraser. I'm trying not to use up my pencil eraser. <laughs> well, anyways. Okay. So 
So maybe not there, but there's another sort of half diamond shape happening here that I find interesting. So I'm using this crease as my center point. I'm going to hit my pencil, see where, lining it up with the edge of that, that point of that kind of half diamond that I see forming until it hits that center line. Curve it up. Turn the work. See? There we go. All right. That one got a little bit off center. Yeah, that's better. Okay, so again, focusing on which point I'm using here. It's the line. Go around. And it just starts to, you see how it starts to draw the design out, out. But then you can go back in. Maybe an element. Like this. You can start to play around with other places to place lines. And again, I'm just kind of by eye seeing where I want that to go. And it's not, they're not all the same. Which is great, you know, having a bit of an organic nature to your drawing. Okay, now I'm starting to look at some other aspects of this flower petal. Like, I want to see something, something more in there. Some other lines. I could do something... I think I know. Maybe with the button. Because the button's a little bit smaller. Hmm. We can, let's see if I focus on it this way, I'm trying to see if I put that, I need another circle in there to do what I'm thinking of, because that's going to help me figure out where I want those points to stop. So I'm going to draw something from the center out, I believe. So. Or maybe not. <laughs> See? I've been drawing these for a while, but sometimes I'm still not sure. You know, I never assume that I know where I'm going with that. Okay. Well, we can move on to a different design aspect. So again, I just keep working on connecting these points more and more, and I'm really working with a lot of round shapes today. Could also draw in some uh, more linear elements. So here's one where I have that diamond shape. So I didn't do them around the whole thing because that would get a little bit tedious for you to watch. I'm just kind of getting an idea different ways you can lay in these elements and how that starts to build. Maybe I could do one. I'm just going to do this by freehanding. Free draw to make a little bit of a line there. Until it hits. Just follow me along the curve.
see how that starts to create some more space in, in between these areas. So you start to develop your positive and negative spaces. And then maybe go through and you know I did something there that I'm not quite sure of and I didn't do it around the whole mandala yet so now I can go in and let's try something else. Maybe using this just kind of guessing about that's about what maybe a quarter of the way down we were to mark it like that. You know, just because it's kind of free, you just do it by eye to see where you might want to put a line. No strict rules, right? Because I don't like that. <laughs> we'll just do that. I think I like that better than. Those other swoops I put in previously. You can see that. Just kind of guessing where I'm going. I mean, if I had other circles, you know, I could use that. You know, something like this, I suppose. Kind of by eye, figure out, okay, that's you know, centered, and I could have another circle as to work with as a boundary if I wanted. Kind of hits those points, so let's just see. So that circle now, I might not keep that line in the final, but you can see how it works to guide, because I'll know where I'm drawing this line is going to go right up to that circle, that border there. So you just keep going along. Let's see, here's one I was dabbling in that's a little more complete. And at this point, I would like to start marking in. And it's almost like you can just do these boundaries. I just do using a black pen and you can make this, you know, again, you can keep it as a line drawing. If you want to color it, you could do that. Just design your own mandala coloring page. <laughs> Just inking it in. Again, not everything has to be drawn with a guide. Some of these I put in a little bit of a scallop. Just kind of, so you have these little smaller spaces, you can start to fill them in. And you're free to do as you like with this. And allow yourself to be free. You know, don't have to plan it all out or to judge it because it may surprise you as you continue to work with it, you know, what's going to develop. See how that starts to just come together. And this was a piece where I didn't square it off right away, and that's fine. I'm kind of probably going to keep this one a little bit small anyways. But the reason why I do enjoy having the square is it really gives me an understanding of what my boundary is to be seeing how far out I can go. Uh, going back to this one we were working with initially, you know, I could continue those points too and just make this more of an octagon shape. Just keep building it out. Going back in. Okay. It's again really simple. Don't need much. You could do this pretty much anywhere. You could just have 
piece of paper, a pencil, a couple of objects, you know, who knows, you know, you just, you have a pin on you, you've got a piece of paper or something in your bag, you can use those shapes just to keep building. This one's really difficult to quite see where it's going to go, but it'll get there. And sometimes I'll just start to mark in some areas right now that I feel pretty secure about. And then that can help me see better where I want to add something. Okay, start to see how that goes. I'm just cleaning that up so then I'm not so distracted by all the pencil lines the more we ink it in as you go. So I hope this was helpful for you to start playing around with just some you know, stillness in drawing, have some fun with it, maybe a little splash of color if that's available for you. And if you'd like, you having fun, you want to share your designs with us, we have our Instagram at AADLgram. Uh, there's also Facebook and Twitter. You can post those images there and just let us see what you're doing, especially with all of our streaming programs that we've been hosting during this time. We appreciate you tuning in. All right. So again, my name's Heidi, and if you had any questions about this, you can email us at contact us and uh, try and address any concerns you have, but just go play and have fun and enjoy your day. Thank you.